Hello, in this video we're going to talk about trig identities without memorization. So as you know in uh, trigonometry there's a lot of these different identities that some of you may or may not remember. I want to teach you a method that is going to be we can use in order to drive these trig identities without having to memorize them. It's a pretty simple method. It is based on complex numbers and it really does not require um, uh, any memorization uh, whatsoever except for one little formula that is very famous. First let's talk a little bit about complex numbers. So if you have a complex number a plus bi the real part is a and the imaginary part is b so the point on the um, vertical line would be bi we can write down a, a complex number let's call that z in terms of uh, the angle and the distance to the origin. So the origin and uh, z have the distance of absolute value of z which is evaluated as um, by the formula root a squared plus b squared. Now if you look at a and b we can write them down in terms of theta and z. So if you write down cosine of theta, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse in this right triangle that we have here and sine of theta would be opposite over hypotenuse so b over absolute value of z and if we substitute that into z z is a plus bi a is absolute value of z cosine of theta plus b is absolute value of z sine of theta and then times i if you factor absolute value of z and put the i in front just to make it a bit easier to read not to mix up sine of theta with sine of theta i this is what we get now this quantity um, cosine of theta plus i sine of theta is also equal to e to the i theta and you can see that by looking at the power series for e to the x cosine of x and sine of x i will give you that um, very quick a quick review of why this equality holds so if you look at e to the power of x that's 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial etc if you look at cosine of x you would get uh, we have a formula for that too 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial x to the fourth over 4 factorial etc and sine of x would be x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus plus etc and if you take the uh, bottom one multiplied by i and then take the top one this uh, the middle one and add them you end up getting e to the power of i theta so just replace x by i theta in the top one so evaluate e to the power of i theta from here and then take the second one add it to i times the third one and you'll end up getting the first one when you plug in x uh, replace x by um, i theta so if you write this down the next time is in fact going to be minus i theta cubed over 3 factorial plus etc so you end up getting this equality okay so bottom line is this if you have a complex number z you can write it down as absolute value of z times cosine of theta plus i sine of theta and this uh, quantity um, cosine plus i sine can also be written as e to the power of i theta and we can also do the product uh, we can do the, do the um, power um, the properties of exponents so if you have e to the power of i alpha times e to the power of i beta that becomes e to the power of i alpha plus beta now um, you might ask okay how is that related to uh, trigonometry so this is how um, it's related to trigonometry so if you recall there are these formulas for sine of angle sine of alpha plus beta there's a formula for that you may or may not remember that you have cosine of alpha plus beta you have cosine of alpha minus beta you have sine of alpha minus beta you have also these uh, formulas sum to product sine of alpha plus sine of beta there's a formula for that um, there is also a formula for cosine of alpha plus cosine of beta and there is one for um, sine times cosine that's the product to sum formula then you have sine times sine 
and finally you have cosine times cosine so as you see there's like a lot of these different formulas and it might not be convenient convenient to memorize all of these and on top of these there's also formulas for tangent cotangent and all that but if you know these formulas you can at least drive those formulas for tangent and cotangent relatively quickly so now how do we get these formulas okay so as I said, as I promised, there's only really one thing you need to remember. So what we need to remember is this, e to the power of i theta, I'm going to use theta, is equal to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. So from here, um, we also know that e to the power of negative i theta, if you just replace theta by negative theta, that would be cosine of theta minus i sine of theta. So that gives us some relations for cosine and sine. For example, when you add these two, you would get cosine, so e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta, and then divide by two. So add the two, the i signs cancel. One of them is negative i sine, the other one is i sine, so we get that. And so that's one formula for cosine. And the other thing is that it is the real part of e to the i theta. And similar for sine of theta. Sine of theta would be e to the i theta, minus e to the negative i theta. However, for this one, we have to divide by 2i. And that's the imaginary part of e to the i theta. OK, perfect. So now, how do we use that to drive those formulas? So here's what we're going to do. Let's say you want to find a formula for sine of alpha plus beta. Sine of alpha plus beta is the imaginary part of e to the i alpha plus beta. Now, I'm going to use properties of exponent. This, this is going to be e to the i alpha times e to the i beta. And then I will write down what it means, um, what is the uh, e to the i alpha. So that's cosine of alpha plus i sine of alpha times cosine of beta plus i sine of beta. And if you look at the imaginary part, when you multiply it out, you get cosine of alpha sine of beta, that's one term that has i, plus sine alpha cosine of beta. So sine of alpha plus beta is cosine alpha sine beta plus sine alpha cosine beta. So that identity is uh, what you might remember from trigonometry, but if you don't, this is how you can easily drive it. So you can do the exact same thing for cosine of alpha plus beta or cosine of alpha minus beta. Now I'm going to show you one example from here and one example from here. Let's say you want to do cosine of alpha plus cosine of beta. So I want to turn this one into a product. So for this one, I'm going to use the other formula for cosine, the formula that is this one. So I'm going to use that. This is e to the i alpha plus e to the negative i alpha over 2 plus e to the i beta plus e to the negative i beta over 2. And I would like to factor this one. So I want to factor this one. So if you think about this, we can actually factor this one by grouping, essentially. If you take the first term and the, uh, the, the third term, that would give me, so let me write it down this way. That would give me e to the i alpha plus e to the i beta. And the other two terms, um, if I write them down as a fraction, we get e to the i beta plus e to the i alpha over e to the e to the i alpha plus beta. So we get that. So that factors this expression. So we have e to the i alpha plus e to the i beta divided by e to the i alpha plus beta and then the other term would be e to the i alpha plus beta plus 1 so that's what we get now this is not quite what we want we wanted uh, to do uh, write them down in terms of cosine and sine so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the take advantage of the fact that if I have two terms that the they are e to the i x and e to the i negative x then I can write them down in terms of cosine and sine so what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor the average from both of these two 
parentheses. From the first parentheses, I'm going to factor the average, so that would be i alpha plus beta over 2. The average of the exponents is uh, alpha plus beta over 2, so that the exponents add up to 0. And then I have a 2 e to the i alpha plus beta. So that gives me e to the i alpha minus beta over 2 plus e to the i beta minus alpha over 2. Factoring the average of the exponents from the second one, we would have to factor e to the i alpha plus beta over 2, and that would end up with e to the i alpha plus beta over 2 plus e to the negative i alpha plus beta over 2. Okay, so the first term here and here and here, these cancel. So what we're left with is e to the i alpha minus beta over 2 plus e to the i beta minus alpha over 2 and that's over 2 times e to the i alpha plus beta over 2 plus e to the negative i alpha plus beta over 2. If I divide that by 2 and multiply by 2, both of these are cosine. This one, the first term is, I, I put the 2 in front, the first term is cosine of alpha minus beta over 2, and the second term is cosine of alpha plus beta over 2. So what I got is this, cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, is uh, plus cosine of beta, is equal to 2 cosine of alpha minus beta over 2, cosine of alpha plus beta over 2. Now there are other ways of getting these formulas as well, of course, but I wanted to show you this idea of using these complex numbers to get this these formulas. Okay, um, and the, then I, I'm going to do one example for the other ones. So let's do sine times cosine. So I want to do sine of alpha, cosine of beta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the formulas. Sine alpha is e to the i alpha minus e to the negative i alpha divided by 2i. And the cosine is e to the i beta plus e to the negative i beta divided by 2. Multiply this out, we get 4i at, at the bottom, and that gives us e to the i alpha plus beta um, minus uh, or plus e to the i alpha minus beta minus e to the i beta minus alpha and minus e to the negative i alpha plus beta. So this gives us, if you look at the first term and the last term, the exponents are negative of each other. So that gives us 2i sine of alpha plus beta. The second, two t second term and the third term, that gives us 2i sine of alpha minus beta. And then divided by 4i. And of course, the i's cancel, and the 2's also cancel. We get sine of alpha plus beta plus sine of alpha minus beta divided by 2. So the identity that we get is sine alpha cosine beta is 1 half sine alpha plus beta plus sine alpha minus beta. Again, we get this identity without really using much or almost at all any trig, um, trigonometry. So we use complex numbers to obtain these. If you enjoyed this video, uh, subscribe to the channel where I have similar video, videos like this. So my focus is on preparing students for mathematics competitions. So I will see you in one of the other videos.